Hey everyone, I got a very, very exciting show for you today. I am bringing back a guest that was on like two weeks ago and we had so many comments, actually requests to bring him back and give more value and uh, David is such a giver that he agreed. So let's welcome David Dodge back to the show. How you doing, David? Hey, I'm doing good, Michael. I'm doing good. Thanks for having me, man. I got to tell you, I got so many feedbacks. Uh, people just loved your video, watched it multiple times and like, get him back. I'm like, okay, I'll try. <laughs> okay. So thanks for coming <laughs> well, back. I'm here, guys. I'm happy to be here. I like to help and share and provide as much value as I possibly can. I've done pretty well for myself and my business, and I just love teaching people how, how to do it as well. That is awesome. One of the things I think we need to do that, that we kind of, I skated over last time was your book. So why don't we talk about, sure. you know, why you, what it is, yeah. first, what hit it again, why you did it, who should, who should get it, you know, what kind of value you're looking to give. So let's, let's talk about your book. Yeah. Yeah. So, so my book is, it's the ultimate guide to wholesale and real estate. It's by myself and my business partner, Mike Slane. So the two of us, we have a podcast and that's discount property investor. And we put together the podcast to help people learn about wholesaling. And we got a lot of feedback from the podcast that, you know, certain people wanted a similar type of content in a book. And they said, you guys should put together a book. So what we did is we took the first 30 episodes of our podcast, transcribed them, and then we hired an editor to help reorganize it to make it under a little bit more, you know, have a little bit more flow and a little bit easier to understand. Cool. So essentially the first 30 episodes of my podcast, you can go listen to for free. And that is the book. Now, if you want it laid out in a little bit more, you know, from, from A to A to Z, like step by step, that's where the book comes in. Mm -hmm. So it's the same content. However, it's, it's presented in a different way. And then of course, in the book, you know, we had the ability to make a lot of cool edits as well as throw in some illustrations. And we also added in the book, um, you know, more case studies or what we like to call story time with Dave or story time with Mike, where one of us will tell a story about a particular deal or a particular piece of marketing that is associated with that section or that chapter. So either way, check out Discount Property Investor or The Ultimate Guide to Wholesale and Real Estate. Uh, you could get it on Amazon. But I'm not here to sell you guys a book. That's not my intentions. I don't really make a whole lot off of the book. It just goes back into the podcast. Yeah. Um, my, you know, I, I just like to provide value either way I can. So the podcast is definitely a free source as well. Uh, I, I appreciate I, you letting me uh, plug the book, Michael. Thank you so much. You got it, David. And again, I just love everything you do. You just keep rolling the same way. Again, you tell people, hey, if you want it, if you want to get it free, go listen to the first 30 podcasts. Sure. You know, some people learn differently. Some people though. like to read too, yeah. man. And that's great. And I wish I could give that away for free, but I want it to look pretty. And I don't want, you know, <laughs> just to do the PDF thing. I like the actual book. I prefer to read myself too. I don't listen to all that much podcasts, you know, mm -hmm. time to time I do, but I'm, I'm a reader. I like to I, read. I, uh, I grew up a reader. I'm a reader as well. So uh, yeah. I like to take notes, make it my own thing. And it's the examples that always bring it right. Story time stuff. It's like that. That's where it crystallizes for me. I just, I get too distracted listening, right? More yeah. Visual. Well, let's do some story time today, brother. Yeah, let's go. So I know we wanted to talk about something you have called the MOA formula, but more importantly, MAO. MAO. How do you make, how do you make offers? How do you do it? So let's talk about making offers today, guys. That's a great, great idea. So when we make an offer, now you have to understand something first. I'm going to back up a second. Not mm -hmm. only am I a wholesaler, but I'm also a landlord mm -hmm. and I'm also an individual that flips houses, right? Buys them, fixes them and retails them. Yep. So I do all three. So I use a formula that allows me to make offers on the properties that I'm going to be buying. And it doesn't really matter what section I'm going to decide with. So I was talking to one of my students this morning um, about this. And we were talking about, you know, when it comes to making offers, that it doesn't matter if he's just looking as a rental property or he's just looking as a fix and flip or he's wanting to do, you know, whatever. Basically, you use the same formula. However, it's highly suggested that you don't pivot. And the mm -hmm. reason I say that is when every time I've pivoted from something that I've wanted to go into originally, and then I'm like, oh, let's end up flipping this, or oh, the flip didn't turn out that great. We're not going to make that much, or let's just turn it into a rental. When you do that and you pivot, 
the, the entire process from A to Z typically is a little different on yeah. each of those different roads that you would take. So you want to stay in your lane is a good way to kind of describe that. Every time I've ever pivoted on a deal, I've made half of what I expected or I didn't make anything. Yeah. So stay away from pivoting, okay? But today, I just want to drop that in there because that is a little, piece of, a little piece of gold. But today, we're going to learn about how we're making offers, and it doesn't matter what road you pick. Just stay on that one. Stay in your lane. Um, and this is how you're going to want to make offers. So it's a simple formula. We talk about it a lot in the podcast and the book, but it's, it's called the MAO formula. So what that stands for is the maximum that I am allowed to offer on a property in order for that to be a profitable venture for me. All right. Mm -hmm. MAO. So I'm going to use this whiteboard right here and I'm going to draw this out. This formula is incredibly simple. So I'm going to draw really big because we don't have to take a whole lot of notes. You guys see that? No. Can't see that. Let me get a better marker here. Whoop. I knew that was gonna happen. No problem. All right. You see that? No. Nope. All right. We're gonna cut this for a second. Like sure. leave it leave it running. We'll cut yeah. it though. Yeah. You have a big ass marker. You got it. All right, we're back. So, <laughs> MAO go. formula. There you go. MAO, again, equals maximum allowable offer. This is what we're going to be solving for, guys. So we don't know that number. This is the whole purpose of this simple equation is to determine that number. So what that equals is our ARV. This thing's going to follow me. Our ARV, which stands for our after repair value, multiplied by our discount rate, DR. Okay? We're going to come back to this. Then we're going to subtract our repairs. And then we're going to subtract a fee if we're wholesaling it. So this step isn't always necessary, but it's the same formula. So minus repairs, minus our fee. So let's review. We're solving for our MAO, which equals maximum allowable offer. In order to determine what we're gonna offer on a property, we use this formula. And the formula is ARV multiplied by my discount rate minus my repairs, minus my fee, okay? Yep. So now we're gonna walk through an example. First, we need to know our ARV. What is our ARV? So the ARV could be different numbers on the same property. And the reason is, is because you may take different approaches to that property, right? Mm -hmm. You may decide you want it as a rental or you may decide you wanna flip this property, right? And if you do a rental, you're gonna probably have a little bit lower grade items in terms of your rehab. If you're doing a, a, a full fix and flip, you're gonna have a higher ARV because you're gonna spend more time and money investing into that property to upgrade it and update it so it changes. So you wanna know your exit first. That's the first thing you wanna do because it determines a different ARV, all right? Now, what is ARV? It's the after repair value. How do you determine the after repair value? Well, you basically tell yourself, if I did this to it, doesn't matter what that is, but if I did this to it, made it look pretty, I could find other properties in the area that have sold on the high range of my comps that I'm confident that this one could meet and be equivalent to and also sell for. So it's the, it's the value after you fix it up, mm -hmm. okay? So you wanna start with that in mind. It's sometimes kind of backwards for people that are new to this, to be like, well, Dave, why, do, why are we starting with that number? Because you have to subtract and multiply all of the costs and fees and things out of that in order to determine what you can offer, okay? One of my students the other day was like, Dave, you make this look so easy. And I'm like, no, 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 no. It is easy. You are bringing emotion into this business. 
and you're wanting to offer on properties because you think they're cute, right? Screw that, guys. This is a numbers game. Real estate is so simple. If you can take your emotion out of it and look at a spreadsheet or look at the numbers, that's what matters. If you can make an offer that makes sense financially and they accept it, it's a win. It, it's, a, it's a deal. You're going to make money, but you have to take the emotion out of it. So back to this, Michael. ARV, after repair value. Again, this can be a little different depending on if you're going to spend 10 grand to make it a, a, a rental or if you're going to spend 60 grand to fix and flip it. Those mm -hmm. ARVs are going to be a little different. But what you want to do, depending on what you, your plan is, determine your ARV. How do you do that? You find comps of like properties, similar bed, bath, and square foot. It's really all there is to it, guys. Maybe type of home, too. Don't, don't compare a ranch to a three-story, right? Type of home, square foot, bed, bath. That's it. Figure out what other ones really close, really recently have sold for. If you can't find really close, then go a little, go out a little bit. If you can't find really recent, then go out a little bit. But your best comps are going to be the most close, the most recent, the most similar. It's that simple, okay? Mm -hmm. So you determine what the property is going to be worth in the end. Then you want to multiply that by what I like to call a discount rate. Most people are going to, are going to basically default to a point seven discount rate 0.7 can you guys read that let me get rid of these brackets so it's a little bit more clear 0.7 yep. okay gotcha. mm -hmm. my range now the cool thing about a discount rate is it's it's on a sliding scale mm. it doesn't always have to be 0.7 if you don't know your scale don't go higher than 0.7 start there default it to 0.7 if i don't know what i'm doing or i'm driving i use 0.7 but if I want to do a little bit deeper analysis or I know an area, here's the reasons that, that your discount rate can vary. Neighborhood, crime, school district, jobs, income, and the cost of rent. All these things are going to vary in different neighborhoods. So you're going to want to essentially use a sliding scale. My scale basically goes from about 0.4 all the way up to 0.85. I'm writing a little crooked here, guys, but you get the point. 0.4 to 0.85. Wow. My default is seven. So why would I go to 0.6 or five or four? Well, if it's an area that I don't even want. But basically, what I do is I make offers that make financial sense to hmm. me, okay? So if somebody calls me and, they're, and it's a neighborhood that I have zero interest in investing in, I'm going to give an offer at 0 0.4, 0 0.5, or 0 0.6, depending on how bad I don't like it, um, of the ARV minus repairs minus fee, which basically means they're not going to like that offer. They're probably not going to accept that offer, but that's an offer that I can't walk away from. Got okay. It. When I make offers, it's not to, to financially benefit somebody else. The definition of business is the act of making money. And I run a business. Okay. So when I make an offer, it's to benefit me and my business financially, okay? Last year, I don't know if I mentioned this on the last episode, I bought 98 houses. Wow. I didn't need to buy any of them. I have a house, a big one, and I'm comfortable there. I didn't need any of these houses. But financially, it made sense to buy 98 because the numbers all made sense. So you have to get rid of the emotion. You have to start to understand the numbers. So on areas of town that have high crime, shitty schools, pardon my language, um, or just not desirable, right? You could go down on your discount rate. Now, why would I ever go above 0.7 to 0.8 or to even 0.85? Well, those are areas that have the best schools in the best part of town and the lowest crime and the most, you know, people that are, you know, really wanting to live there. The demand is high. So the areas are more competitive too. So I will come up to 0.8 or even 0.85 above 0.7 essentially for those areas because it's going to be harder to get those deals. I don't like going above 0.7 because then it really, really, really limits my ability to make a large profit. The higher you go from 0.7, the more risk the deal is. There's more risk. The lower you go, the less risk because you're essentially buying a property at 70 cents on the dollar in this scenario. So let's keep moving. Mm -hmm. Recap. 
max allowable offer equals our after repair value multiplied by our discount rate. And if you don't know your area, stick to 0.7. Next, we're gonna subtract out the cost of getting the property to the ARV. So we talked about that earlier. That can be a different number. You could have an ARV of 120 or an ARV of 180, all depending on what you do to it, right? If it's, if it's just gonna be another rental in a place where there's a ton of rentals, your ARV is not gonna be that great. But if you do a fix and flip on it, and there's very few nice homes in the area, but it's an upcoming area, you might get a bigger number. So the repairs are really, really gonna affect your ARV but you will determine that from the beginning because you're gonna say, okay, this is the lane I'm gonna pick. I talked about that earlier. I'm not gonna flip flop. If I do that, I'm gonna lose money. I'm gonna be a bad investor. To be a good investor, you need to know your exit first. Next, you need to determine what your ARV is gonna be and why. And then you're gonna need to know the, the cost to get to that ARV. So you take the ARV, multiply it by your discount rate, subtract out your repairs, and that gives you our MAO. Now, MAO doesn't mean that's the offer you give the seller. Thank you. That means this number here is the maximum that you can pay for a property. Michael, did you know that it takes my company between four to six months on average to do a wholesale deal? I did not know that. We do about eight to 10 a month on the low side, sometimes as many as 15. By average, about 10 or 12, okay? Okay. MAO is the most that we're willing to pay. So let's just say in this scenario, we had an MAO of 200K, just as an example, 200K, okay? okay? Yep. That's the most I can pay. So the offer that I'm going to make to my motivated seller is probably gonna be around 175 to 190. Doesn't even really matter, but I'm just gonna go low. Mm -hmm. Reason is, is because they're gonna say, no, that's crazy low. And there's always a negotiation. If there's not a negotiation, then they're either super motivated or the, the um, property owner doesn't like your offer at all. But if you're close, usually you're going to negotiate. Nobody wants to work with somebody that isn't willing to negotiate. Okay. At one time in my life, I was like, this is my offer. It's the best offer. And it's, and it, you're never going to get another offer from me. If you do, it's lower. Right. And people didn't want to work with me because of the fact I was being a D bag. Right. right. Yep. I get it. I only did that for a little bit of time until I realized people like to negotiate. So let's yep. play their game. Yep. So the goal is to negotiate up a little bit and let them negotiate down a lot. And I think we talked about that maybe in the last episode, not yep. sure. Yeah but you got to have some room. So the reason that we don't send our MAO is because we got to have some wiggle room. So let's just say at a 200K offer, keep it really simple, simple math. I offered them 190 and they said, Dave, we need two, 240. You know, we're, you're, thank you for coming out. Your offer is way too low. At yep. 190, we need 240. Well, guess what happens over the next four to six months? We call them every week or two. We say, we're still interested. We're sorry that we can't pay you what you want because that benefits you. We're in business for us. Mm -hmm. Here's the number we can pay you. And over the next four to six months, now this is not, this is not every deal. This is average. We're working 2,000 deals at a time here, folks. Okay, does somebody call me and I go buy a house today and have it sold tomorrow? All the time. But on average, over the last 350 deals, it's four to six months. Okay. So what we do over that four to six months is we call them back every week or two. We have an amazing system for follow-ups and we ask them how things are going. Hey, do you still own the property? If you sold it, great. I'm happy for you. And I truly am, right? Yeah. But if you need my help, I'm here for you too. So you haven't sold it yet? Bummer. Man, how much are the taxes again? I forgot. No, I don't. I have them in my CRM, but I want to just yeah. reiterate that there's costs of them owning this property. And then what I'll do is I say, hey, I can maybe pay you a little bit more. I can maybe give you a 192, you know, and I keep doing this over and over again until I basically get to where I'm at at 200 and I try to get them to come down. Okay. So it's just an example of why you never start with the most in mind. You start with a little bit below that. So you're significantly discounting this number all the way through our formula here. But even once you get it, you're discounting it again. Reason being two things. One, people want to negotiate. All right. They don't like people that are stern. 
And that's okay. You can negotiate. But what you want to get really good at is coming up about 10% and having mm -hmm. them come down 90%. Yep. That's, that's what a true negotiation uh, that you can win at, right, looks like. If, number two, if you offer 190 but you're willing to pay 200 and they accept because they're that motivated, boom, you just made 10 grand. Not that's bad. Simple. Yeah. Not bad. Right. Yeah. So you always want to come off of that scenario. Now, we've worked our way through the first part of this. And the reason is, is because if you are buying rental properties or you are buying fix and flips, this, I'm going to get rid of my little scale here just so it's a little simpler here. This is the formula you use. This is the formula that I use. If I'm looking at buying a rehab, if I'm looking at buying a rental, I use this formula, okay? Now, if I am going to wholesale this deal, all right, all wholesaling is is buying great and selling good. That's really it whenever you're dealing with the investor side. Yep. Simple, all right? When you're dealing with the motivated seller side, it's as simple. It's just a little different. It's convenience for a discount. It's just mm -hmm. a trade, okay? Yep. You buy great, you sell good. So as a wholesaler, I'm going to use the same formula, but now I'm going to go even lower. I'm going to get my ARV. I'm going to multiply it by, let's say, 70%. I'm going to take out the cost to get it to the ARV. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to then take out an additional five, 10, 20 grand, depending on, you know, how much I think I can squeeze out of the deal, which could vary mm -hmm. off of it. Okay. Which is going to give me an even lower MAO. Okay. The reason that you have to add your fee is because the first part of the formula is what all the investors, all the savvy ones exactly. that are making money in their, in their buying and flipping properties as a business, not a hobby, they're looking at the numbers, right? They're looking at this formula here. So your first formula here is for rental properties, it's for fix and flips. If you want a wholesale, it's the same formula, but you take out an additional five, 10, 20 grand from that offer. You buy it even better than a good deal. You get a great deal. And then you sell it to somebody else like me, a good deal, and everybody wins. Very, very simple. So that's our formula. What can I explain or build on? Well, you know what I think would be really, really cool? You bought 98 houses last year. Why, and I really think we got to remember how you started. Pick your lane in the beginning, right? What sure. is this asset going to be? So why don't we break down, think about three different properties. Think about a landlord purchase you did, right? You, a keeper. Talk about a flip. And then talk about a wholesale deal. Let's just break. Let's just walk three different examples underneath. Yeah, I got all three going right now. So there no big go. deal at all. Let's so go. I just got a property. Let's see. Ironside's a good example. Ironside has an ARV of about, you got a calculator handy? Uh, I need some help. Yes. Use a phone if you got it. I, do. So I we, just had to pick it up. Yep. Okay. Got it. Okay. So Ironside is one we just picked up. It has an ARV of 210. Okay. Now, it's in a nicer than normal area. Okay. However, I didn't scale my thing too high, but I remember making the offer on this one. Uh -huh. And the um, discount rate I chose for this neighborhood was 0.75. I just okay. remember it. So 0.75, so 210,000 times 75%. And then my repairs were 30,000 on that deal. Okay. Minus 30K. And there was no fee. This is a fix and flip. Yep. This is the first thing. The fee is irrelevant here, guys. Okay, so what was my MAO on that? So 127.5. 75 minus 30. 127.500. So my MAO was 127.500. We bought this property for 112,000. <laughs> nah. We did good. You did good. So, so the most I could have paid was 127.5. Mm -hmm. What I did was I offered like 99K. I went in really low. Okay. And then essentially I met him in the middle. I didn't do that great on my negotiations here because I had to come up like half. Yeah. Typically I want to come up a little bit. And that's okay, guys. If you're under, that's another lesson. If you're under the MAO, who cares? I could have came up a ton, but yeah. I came in really low. Okay. Yeah. So we ended up buying it, I think, for 112 in this in this scenario, and um, it's going to need the full 30. Yep. It'll sell for 210, and I could have either I could have uh, even gone with a lower discount in this scenario, but it doesn't matter. I got mm -hmm. the deal less than I was willing to pay, even after negotiating. 
I still made an extra 10 grand, yeah. 15 even, 15, 15 yeah. on the purchase, let alone we're going to have a, a hefty profit. So this deal, I don't know, 40, 45 grand in profit, something like that is what we'll make on this. Um, so again, let's go back to the very first question. So this, this is a fix and flip example, which is awesome. Yeah. But mm -hmm. you're sitting in front of Ironside. You've done this hundreds of times. Mm -hmm. What is it about Ironside that made you go fix and flip versus wholesale versus I want to add it to inventory? It's a good question. It needed every bit of 30 grand. Okay. No matter what, even if I wanted to turn it into a rental. Okay. I don't like putting 30 grand into rental properties because I can find elsewhere that are quicker yeah. that need maybe 10 or 20, sometimes even 25, but not 30. Okay. So I right? used a lot of cash. Totally get it. Yeah. So when all, all my rentals, I typically like them to be easy. I'm not, I don't like to work that hard guys. I'm kind of <laughs> lazy. So with that being said, yeah, if it's a rental property that needs 40 or 50 grand, or in this case, 30, it's just too much work. Okay. And there was a lot of spread. Okay. On my rentals, I shoot for basically two things. I want 20 grand in equity, three things, 20 grand in equity, 300 a month cash flow and zero dollars invested. Okay. In this scenario, I probably could have refied all my money out because there was a lot of equity. Yeah. Right. And I probably could have got my, um, I probably could have hit all three on this actually. However, there was an opportunity to make 40 grand. Right. So in that scenario, it's like that helps pay the bills and the mm -hmm. bookkeeper and the closing coordinator yeah. and everything else, you know? So in you that scenario, feed, feed the I machine. See, no, that's a really good question. When I see the big spreads or my team sees the big spreads, we capitalize on that. Okay. The rentals that don't have, you know, more than maybe 20, 25 grand in equity. Um, those are the ones that it's like, cool. I don't have to have any money invested after my refi. Mm -hmm. And I don't need that because really 20 grand in equity is only really about eight or $9,000 in cash because of the cost to sell. Yeah, of the course. cost to sell a property is seven to ten percent. Yep. You know, not not just your real estate commissions, but everything else that adds to it. It's expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So if I if you know we basically if we can make about twenty five or thirty grand on a flip, mm -hmm. like actual like net net, right. then we'll do that. Okay. If it's only you know a little bit like ten or twenty or you know ten or fifteen, then we just keep those as rentals. Great question. Okay. All right. So there's Einstein. I like it. All right. Mm -hmm. Makes total sense. Okay. Now you're standing in front of a property and it's either a wholesale or uh, a keeper. So whichever you choose to do first is fine. Okay. Uh, let's do another wholesale that we're working on right now. Okay. Let me think of one. Got it. Okay. Okay. This one here is on Melcher Road. It is a property that has a ARV of 110. Okay. 110 K. Yep. We used a discount rate on this one at 0.6. It's, it's a little bit less than our average area. It's not bad. If it was bad, I'd be at 0.4, right? Yep. It's not bad. I invest in this area of town all day, but I used a little bit less. Now, again, guys, don't get caught up on the discount rate. It's a sliding scale. If you don't know, go with 0.7. I, I've done this thousands of times and I don't know 50% of the time. It's okay. Just go to that number. Right. But if you know the area and if it's a little bit higher or a little bit less desirable than the norm mm -hmm. in a 20 mile radius of where you're standing, then just, then you can decide. Right. But in yep. this one, I use 0.6 and the repairs at this house were about 25. They were close about 25. And then I wanted to make 15 grand on the wholesale. Oh, geez. This is a wholesale deal. Yeah. 15 grand. It's a lot. I don't make that on my average deal. We make about a seven or eight average, but we do deals that are 15, 20 as well. Okay. But I usually, I try to shoot high yeah. for two reasons. One, if I can get it to work, like I did in that first scenario with the extra 10 grand, boom, yep. it's more money for me. Yep. Two, if it doesn't work at that number, I now have a ton of wiggle room yeah. to negotiate up with my buyers. Gold nuggets everywhere here, guys. Yeah. So I'm going to take off another 15 because I got my repairs. Now I'm going to do my fee. Yep. Now I got another 15K. So help me out. What's 110? You got your calculator handy? I, I, I do. It's a really, really low number. <laughs> okay. I hope it's really low. 110 times 0. 0.6. Yeah. So that is... 
25 yeah. minus 15. It's such a low number. I want to make sure I'm doing this right. So 110 times 0. 0.6 equals 66K, right? Okay. And then we take 25K out, another 15K out. I came up with a whopping 26 grand. 26 grand. Yep. That was my MAO on this property. Wow. <laughs> nice. Now, right. I paid a little bit more than that. Okay. Because they wouldn't accept it. Yeah. And that's okay. I went really low. Yep. Okay. And I had a huge, yes. huge wholesale fee in there. Yeah. I ended up paying 35000 for the property. Oh, jeez. But that's okay. Yeah, that's Because okay. I had a ton of, oh, there goes my board. I had a ton of wiggle room. Get my board fixed here. Yeah. I had a ton of wiggle room with my 15. And I went in at 0.6. So my yep. MAO was really, really low. Now, typically, you're not going to do this type of analysis. You're just going to have an MAO that is the max, yep. right? I've been doing this a while. I can fluctuate a little here and there because I know I have wiggle room here and yeah. here when I make that offer. Yeah, but I mean, just, know, just, just, to put you, in, just to put in the numbers, right, just so, to tie this together, if, if, and again, you can do this, not your new students, if you took the 0.6 to back to 0.7, that's an 11K swing right there. Boom, 11K. And if I with this at five grand versus exactly. 15, that's a 22 point. That's a $22,000 swing. Yeah, exactly. So I, here's the thing. I like to make my offers so low that I'm embarrassed. There you go. For one, like literally somebody's got a house that could be worth 110 grand. I'm offering them 26,000. <laughs> wow. <laughs> right. But two, because sometimes guys, not very often, I'm not going to lie and say that it happens a lot. But sometimes they'll say, I am so freaking motivated. I will take your $26,000 offer. Yeah. It's one of those things where the harder you work at something, the luckier you get, which really yeah. just means the better you get at it or the more opportunity you have in front of you to make the odds hit. This mm -hmm. is a numbers game. Yeah. So I ended up paying 35 for this house. I wanted to pay more. But again, I, like you said, I had, I had about $20,000 swing because I went low here yep. and I went high here. So yep. the numbers were a little bit higher, but it doesn't matter because it's a wholesale. If I was just going to buy this as a rental and I didn't have my fee and I did a 0.7 or even 0.75 because that's what the bank's going to lend me, right? Yep, exactly. Yeah. It would have been a buy all day at 35, sure. but I, I'm marketing, I marketed this property and I got it sold for 58000 there you go. So what's 58 minus 35? 23. 23. So that was a $23,000 wholesale case study. And I got it for a couple reasons. One, because I went really low and I even had to come up on that number, but it was still, that number yeah. there, like you said, was still below an MAO yeah. of 0. 0.7 yep. with only a five or even, even 10 K. It is. It's still below that. Yep. Right. It is. Um, and then so if the cool thing is, is from here, I had this at such a great deal. I marketed it out at like 65,000. Sure. 65 plus 25, that puts you at about 110. Not a, yeah. not a um, super good spread, yeah. but I'd rather come down a lot in this sure. scenario and have a ton of interest on it, you know, yeah. than put it out low and then just get flooded. And it's better to just have the wiggle room in my opinion. Yeah, totally get it. That's awesome. So All that's right. a wholesale scenario. I think we made, what I say, 21, 22,000? 23. 23 grand. Cool. Very cool. All right. All right. We got one left. This is the whole buy and keep, be a, be a happy landlord. Okay. I'm losing it. There we go. I caught it. Okay. So <laughs> next one is a landlord property. Let me think of one that we just bought. <sighs> Just bought, so we bought like seven recently. So I'm trying to pick one. <laughs> Rough. Okay. So let's look you. at, um, let's look at Corbett. Corbett's a pretty good deal for us. Okay. Um, so this is a rental. Now I'm going to take off my fee. Yep. Agreed. I don't need the fee, guys. I didn't need the fee on the fix and flip. I didn't need the fee on the rental. That's only if you're going to wholesale it. You buy it better than this. So you can essentially sell it at this because you want to sell something to somebody that they're looking to buy at. Don't make it more difficult than it needs to be, right? This is what the investors are using 
So if you can get below this, go pay that. And that's the spread. That's the wholesale. So we talked about the fix and flip. We talked about the wholesale. Now we're going to do a rental. So there is a one that we looked at the other day. It had an ARV of only 90, which is okay. Yeah. Um, not, not only it, it, it wasn't, you know, $300,000 house. It's a rental. Um, it had an ARV of 90. Oops, wrong marker. We, we used a discount rate of 0.7. It was in a standard area. Okay. It only needed about 15 grand worth of repairs. Again, I don't like to, to do rentals that need 50, 60 grand or, you know, really even above 30. Okay. You know, I like to keep the repairs low. Now I will do 2025, 20, but in this scenario, it only needed about 15. Okay. So in this scenario, what's my MAO? 90,000 times 0.7. Minus 15K. 48,000. 48,000. That's my MAO. We made an offer at 40,000. Mm -hmm. So we offered 40. And we ended up getting it at 42.5. Nice. So again, I came up, guys. I would have even got up to 48. But the cool thing is, is whenever we offered 40, okay, they were at 50. Mm. so i i could have came up the whole 80 percent right to get them at 48 immediately but there's no use because that's extra profit yep. anytime you can get an offer accepted below an ma an a an mao right it's extra in the last scenario i i accepted an offer above it right so it wasn't extra but i also added in a ton of extra in the beginning of that scenario i think yeah. you can catch that so we ended up buying, I think it was 42500 Okay. Now the 42500 it needs an extra 15 k right, to be able to get to the 90 k appraisal. So what's 42.5 plus 15? 57.5. 50, so let's call it 60 k Okay. Because I had 57.5 in the purchase and rehab, and then I had about $2,500 in holding costs. Mm-hmm. And leasing. Okay. My first, my first month's lease with my, with my manager, he takes three quarters. Yep. Um, you got these, you got interest expense to the bank uh, or, or my private lender or hard sure. money lender sure. to lend me the um, 42, five that I needed plus the 15. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was able to be all into the property at $60,000. Yeah. Okay. This, this one's in progress right now. So we're not actually complete with our rehab, but this is the projection, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, the cool thing is, is in this area, my bank will give me a loan for 70 to 75% of what I think it'll appraise for. I thought going in, it was 90. Let's say that I get dinged down to 87,000. Just curious. Yep. So what's 87,000? times 0.7. We're going to go low on my, on my appraisal and we're going to go below what I'm 60,900. So 60. So look here, guys, 60,900 is what the bank's going to loan me. And I'm going to be all in this for 60 grand. After my closing costs and my interest expense, which may or may not have been in the difference here, I'm going to basically be into this property for no money. Yep. Zero. Okay. The cool thing is I'm going to get a loan from the bank for 70, sometimes even 75% of what it's going to appraise for. Okay. And then I'm going to pay back my private lender for not only the purchase, but also the rehab and also the interest that I owe that person for borrowing the money all the way back. And now I have a loan with the bank for 60,900. Oh, there goes my board. That's okay. Uh, 60,900. Yeah. And I now also, more importantly than that, own an asset yeah. that is rented. It has a tenant in there. And our criteria, I think I mentioned it earlier, were we need 20 grand in equity. Yep. Well, 60,900 to 90 is about 29,000 yep. in equity. 
Yeah. We couldn't get that if we sold it. We would get like, you know, half of that or three quarters of that. Again, you don't get it all because there's a cost to sell. Mm -hmm. um, we will cash flow $300 ish, hopefully mm -hmm. a little bit more. We shoot for 300 if it's 287. So what? It's close, close enough, enough, right? Yeah. Yep. Shoot for 300. All right. And then there was three things there was 300 bucks in cash flow. 20 grand minimum equity. And the third thing was little to no money to purchase it. I'd like to be at zero. And we've, we'll, we will achieve that with this one sure. because we're using the Burr strategy. I'm sure you teach and talk a ton about the Burr strategy. Yep. Um, but this is, this is my true passion here. Wholesaling is great. Fixed and flip is great. This is cool because you can get an asset for little to no money. In this case, no money that will bring in 300 bucks a month and it will have equity that you can then borrow against once you build up enough of it. This one house probably couldn't get a whole lot of loan on that equity. Yeah. But if I have 10 of these and I multiply 10, 10 times 30 grand, that's 300,000. The bank may give me a hundred, hundred and fifty, hundred and seventy five thousand dollar line of credit. Yep. on the equity in these homes too. So there's yeah. so many advantages with the rental property. Well, I tell you what, we have already found out what our next interview is going to be together. We are going to dive <laughs> into that burst strategy. I yes. want this, I want this MAO to sit. We have broke down multiple deals. There's so much here for folks to chew on. Um, this has been outstanding. Uh, and I want hey, to thank Thanks for having me, Michael. I appreciate it. Absolutely. We're going to do another one next week or the week after when your schedule permits, and we will dedicate that one to Burr. Let's do it. All right, buddy. Thank Guys, I hope much. you learned a little bit about these, about the, how we make our offers, okay? The formula, let's just do a quick recap, Michael. It is so simple. Your maximum allowable offer is going to equal your after repair value. This is the number that you think it'll either appraise for or sell for. And that's two different things, depending on what you do to it. Multiply it by 0.7 if you don't know otherwise. Keep it so simple. If you, do, if you know your neighborhoods really, really well, that can slide a little bit, but don't go too extreme. Maybe go up like a half a point or, you know, down a half a point. Maybe stick to that. But use 0.7, all right? Then subtract out the cost to get it there. And then the only other step is if you intend to wholesale it, this is what everyone's buying at, guys. Take it down even more. So add the fee in there. And then last but not least, just because it says you can make an offer of 150, a.k.a. your MAO, doesn't mean you offer that. That's the most that you can pay in the end. So take that number and take five or 10 grand off of it. And that's your offer. David's giving you guys gold here. Make sure you watch this probably a couple of times, play with it, build your spreadsheets and figure out what your MAO is in your market. Thank you very much, David. Yes. See you guys. Thank you. See.